Hey, praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. Hey, what a blessing it is to be coming back to you in our Wednesday night Bible study. I tell you, we just had a wonderful Resurrection Sunday, I tell you. Oh, we serve a risen Savior. Amen. Tonight, we're so glad to be here. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. We do honor our lovely First Lady, Dr. Joyce Marie, and our Executive Pastor in his afternoon. So glad to see Dad Cobwell. And we're praying for the bereaved amongst us. Uh, Deacon Gibson went home to be with the Lord, but... We, we believe beyond a doubt he is with the Lord, and I know he having, he's having a good time up there. Well, we have a wonderful Bible study for you tonight. So glad to have our, our visitor here, Sister Cynthia. Everybody say amen to Sister Cynthia. Amen. Tonight, we're going we're gonna to be study, uh, talking about the necessity of preaching. Amen. And we, we're, we're in Acts chapter 14, and we're getting ready to go into that. Amen. And we just thank God for it. And that's our lovely first lady to read for us. And uh, we'll be skipping around different versions of the Bible. But uh, do we have the new King James? Just go to the King James. Amen. Then we'll, we'll switch back and forth. Amen. Acts chapter 14. Read. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. Uh-huh. Go back. Okay. Uh, well, she got the new... Uh, uh, Okay, read the New King. Now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews. And so spoke that a great multitude, both of the Jews and of the Greeks, believed. Now we're talking about who? Paul and Barnabas. You know, they were ran out of Antioch. You know that. And now they're still going around preaching the gospel. Our subject tonight is the necessity of preaching the gospel. And here they come to Iconium. And, and they, they go into the synagogue. Now, you know, synagogues are basically what? Jewish. But they go in there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and guess what? Uh, Sister Thomas just read the synagogue of the Jews. And so spoke the great multitude both. So spoke that a great multitude, both Jew and Greek, believed. Isn't that something? Now, that was, we say spoke. Now, go to the King James. Amen. Get that in regular King James. Uh, say, uh, they spake, spake in his preaching. A great multitude believed. Now, as we get into this, praise God, we're talking about the necessity of preaching. Paul and Barnabas, one thing we want to keep up, they worked together. And it came to pass in Iconium, that they went both together. Now, that's so important, praise God, because, you know, Paul had outgrew Barnabas in, in ministry probably, probably 10 to 1. Paul was a powerful man. But Barnabas knew how to work with Paul. And we see it all the time. Happy to see Brother Lack. We see it all the time in the church. There are some preachers, uh, Brother Taylor, going to have more powerful ministries than others. But it doesn't matter. We support each other. Amen. If Barnabas was up preaching, Paul was saying, preach Barnabas. Paul was up. Paul was backing Barnabas up. One thing I, I, I never cared too much for, and I really respect you, Dad Caldwell, and other preachers, that Larry and others. When a preacher's up preaching, praise God, everybody don't say it just alike. Amen. But if they're telling the truth, you get with the truth. Amen. So it came to pass when they got to Iconium that they both together in the synagogue uh, of the Jews so spake. Now, I believe Paul was doing all the preaching, but Barnabas was right there praying, Lord, send your word through Paul. And, and that's what makes things work. I, I've, I've, I've literally seen preachers sit down on other preachers. Now, you can't get with everything. Somebody saying something false, I, I can't get with that. But if somebody's saying, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, just get with the truth. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Now, they work together, Paul and Bunnels work together preaching the gospel. And that was so important. Now, the gospel is very important, the necessity of the gospel. Go to 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 10. Now, 
Don't ask me why God does it, but let me tell you something. We all know this. We need preaching. Read that, Sister Thomas. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, uh -huh. and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now go to 1 Corinthians 2.10, I believe. I believe I may have had the wrong. 2.10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Okay, now get this, 1 Corinthians 1.21. I think that may be it. 1 Corinthians 1.21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Son, you, you ever seen a preacher go to hooping and getting happy? And Now, people do it differently. Sometimes a preacher gets so happy, you say, man, he, that looks sort of foolish. But God take the foolishness of preaching to save some. Now, now everybody, everybody can get saved. Sometimes we're making them expressions on our face. And, but he takes the foolishness of preaching to save some. How about that? Now, now, now watch this here. Watch this here. Praise God. I'm going to quit walking a little bit. Amen. They went into the synagogue, and Paul and Barnabas, out of all that wisdom they had, they were preaching Jesus Christ. Amen. And step one, when they went there, they preached Christ. Uh, no, step one, they were together. Step two, guess what? They preached Jesus Christ. The only way somebody could get saved is preaching Jesus. You can't get saved through politics. I mean, I talk politics sometimes. And, you know, we pray for our political leaders. But politics can't save you. Philosophy can't save you. Nobody could come to the God, the Lord, unless we come through who? Jesus. All right, step three. As we read this here, praise God. Look at the text. It says, when they preach, go back to verse one and get it in, get it in the King James. Acts 14.1. Read, read that again, Sister Thomas. And it came to pass in Iconium, that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. Number three, they got results from their preaching. A great multitude believed. Now, now, when you preach under the anointing of God, somebody's going to be touched. How many? Somebody say, thank God for that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. They preached, number three, a great multitude believed amen and they, they they came to the lord go to go to romans chapter 12 chapter 10 12 just a, just a few scriptures we're going to go over romans chapter 10 12 for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him now, now, okay who call on the name of the lord they got a group out now called the Black Hebrews. And I, I tell you, praise God, be careful with them. They have gotten so dogmatic, they believe that they don't even have to accept the Lord. They automatically go into heaven. That's what I heard some say, because they are the Black Hebrews. Now, according to this, this text, the same Lord is over all, and he rich unto all who call upon him. I don't care what nationality you are, Jesus died for the whole world. Amen. There's no difference between Jew and Greek. God ain't got no stepchildren. Amen. We are all God's children. Can I get an amen? amen? And whosoever call on the name, how do you call on him? Somebody tell me how you call on the name of the Lord. Somebody said it? Just simple, simple prayer. Just call on him to prayer. Amen. And, and the sinner's prayer, I've heard people say when you pray the sinner's prayer, they say, oh, that don't, that ain't, there's more to it than that. You, if you pray that prayer in faith and accept Christ 
and repent of your sins, yes, you a Christian. Amen. You a Christian. Amen. Well, somebody say, I rolled on the floor. Well, maybe you had more devils in you. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. But according to Romans 10, 99, 10, 9 and 10, whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Now, some people say that's future tense. But shall be, he's saying this whosoever. So he's asking the question, when you do it, you're going to be saved. Anybody remember doing that? Yeah. Amen. Now, now, now watch this here. So that's step three. He loves everybody. Let me, let me uh, go a little further with that. Go to Isaiah chapter 45, 22. Somebody say, thank God for Jesus. God for Jesus. Read Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God. And there is none else. Look unto me and be saved. be saved. There was a man named Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon, uh, one of, a great preacher in, in Europe. This scripture, this is the scripture that brought, brought him to the Lord. Look unto me and be saved. All the ends of the earth. When you look to Jesus, he's going to save you. Amen. When we preach Christ, praise God, people accept. Now, this is elementary to you all. But when you preach Jesus, and accept Jesus as your Savior, guess what? You're going to become a child of God. And we just celebrated Easter. He died on the cross. They buried him. Now, who did he die for? He died for us. And when we activate it by putting faith in what he did, we become a child of God. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Now, I can't put it on my glass. I got brand new glass. I got two pair of new glasses, and I'm still wiping them. I don't know, I think. Praise God. Okay, now that's step three. Step one, they work together. Step two, they preach Christ. Step three, they saw results. And, and while we're on step three, one other, go, go to Revelation chapter 22, 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him that hear it say, come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Now, this is, this is so, so important. The spirit say, come, and whosoever will, come and take the water of life freely. God is calling people, and we're going to see in this text, some people are going to understand. Now, I don't, I don't see how they could do it, but I probably did it myself. Some people are going to hear God, and they're going to say, not today. Because you still, God doesn't make us get saved. Can I get a witness? Amen. Well, how many are glad when you heard him, you came to him? Amen. When I look at that chair right there, I say, Deacon Gibson in good hand. That's what it's all about. Amen? Now, 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 now watch this here. The Spirit of God the Spirit of God, and the bride say, come. And let him that hears say, come. And let him that are thirst, thirst means you, you, you thirsty, and, and, and can't nobody feel the void in our heart but Jesus. Come, and whosoever will. Whosoever will is who? That's everybody. Let him come and take the water of life freely. When you come, man, you don't have to pay for it. Amen? It's free. And here's step four in this verse. Let's go to verse two. We'll see step. Read uh, Acts uh, 14 to read that. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. Now, this is so important. As Paul and Barnabas preached that good word, there were unbelieving Jews stirring up the Gentiles. People about to get saved, and these unbelieving Jews stood in their way. Now, we just read that Jews and Gentiles got saved. So these troublemakers, I'm quite sure the Holy Ghost touched them too. But some people just blatantly and on purpose reject Jesus. Now, don't ask me how in the world a person could do that. Thank you, First Lady. Don't ask me how a person could do that. And, 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 and the Bible says we shouldn't stand in the way of a sin. But here they stand. I remember reading a story once about this man. He was a drunk. And his daughter was seeking the Lord. And his daughter, she was about 
14, and she was seeking the Lord. And they had a revival way back in the 1800s sometime. And this young girl was going to church, and God was touching her. And her, her name was May. Her daddy said, May, if you go down to that church and get saved, I'm going to whip you. Bloody. And the girl just got discouraged and never went back to church. A few months later, this girl, they tell me in the story, she came down with a disease and she died. But while she was dying, she was slipping away into hell. And she said, Papa, bring me some water. I'm hot. And he brought her water. She said, Papa, I need more water. I'm hot because her soul's slipping away in hell. And he said, May I wish I would have let you got saved. Sometimes people have come to church and try to pull people out of the church. Sometimes people sit by you on the pew and try to keep you from hearing the word. You're standing in the way of a sinner. Amen? It's a bad thing. If you don't want it, you say, if you don't, if you don't want to go, don't you hinder me? And that's real, praise God. So, so, so step four is these Jews, they begin to grumble in opposition. Now, they believed the gospel, but they just blatantly rejected the gospel and tried to keep somebody else from coming to Christ. Mother Wade, that's a bad thing to do, to try to keep somebody Amen. from coming to Christ. Amen. Praise God. They willfully disobeyed God and tried to discourage others. I wonder what you think, and I'm not God, I wonder what you think a person's fate like that going to be when you're trying to stand in the way of somebody else if you don't get saved. They, and, and then go back to the text again, uh, Romans 14, 3. Oh, 14, 2. Go back to through. No, not Romans, I'm sorry. Acts 14, 3. Were we 3? Okay. Go, go to two, two. Now this is step four. But the unbelieving Jews, they stirred up Gentiles. They stirred up Gentiles. Paul and Barnabas talking that Jesus stuff. Man, y'all don't need that. They don't even know what they talk. And they understood it. But they were used of the, how many know the devil could use you? And made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. Get that in the New Living, Sister Tillman. Read that, baby. Some of the Jews, however, spurned God's message and poisoned the minds of the Gentile against Paul and Barnabas. Isn't that something? When a preacher up preaching, don't focus on that preacher, but you can't help it sometimes. Focus on the message. They, 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 they spurn God's message. Just sort of like, just disregard. Because let me tell you, the gospel got power in itself. How many know that? So just like the gospel was touching these other people, it was touching them. But their hearts became hard, and they obeyed the devil over obeying the Lord. They spurn God's message. Just spurn it. Just, just say, man... It may be right, but we're going to stop somebody else from believing. Amen. And poison the minds of the Gentiles against Paul and Barnabas. Isn't that something? The devil is nasty. And guess who devil worked, the devil worked through? He worked through people, man. Amen. That's why I don't want to be an agent of the devil. We shouldn't. Sometimes if you don't understand where a preacher coming from, I remember Benny Hinn used to pray for people and he used to blow on them and they would fall down. And I mean, I said, oh, that ain't real. And the Holy Spirit, man, they Deacon Collins in the church say, man, if you don't understand something, keep your mouth off. Right. Yeah. Don't put your mouth on stuff you don't understand. You may be talking against the word of God. Yeah. If any of us ever did it, repent and stop it. Yeah. Amen. Now, sometimes preachers are going to preach things and it may not be biblically true, but you still should try to go to them and pray for them. Because sometimes people do preach uh, false doctrine. But having said that, 
we shouldn't be talking about preaching. Sometimes I remember reading a story about uh, this lady back in his 1800s story. She was riding one of these old steam trains, and she said, uh, I think it was Nebraska or something, she told the conductor, say, sir, when you get to a place called Beaumont, I want you to let me and my two children off. It was a uh, guy on the train. He thought the conductor was so busy. He said, ma'am, the conductor going to forget that. I know where Beaumont at. When you get to Beaumont, we'll, we'll, tell, we'll, we'll, we'll tell the conductor to stop, and you could get off there. Well, the lady got off at a water uh, tank, and the man said, this is where you're supposed to get off. About 10 miles later, the conductor said, we, we coming into Beaumont, it's time to, get, time to get off the train. Then the man say, but I told the lady Beaumont was 10 miles back there. The conductor say, you were wrong, sir. And what I'm saying is sometimes people could preach a bad message. Now, I'll be honest with you. I know the Bible fairly well, but one thing I don't want to make a mistake on is how to be saved. Amen. I want to make sure when a person accepts Jesus, they are saved. Because you, you, you know a lot of these doctrines out here that man has made, some of them may be right, some of them may be wrong, but we'll know in the Bible. Bible one thing we do know, he was born of a, lived a, went to the cross, they buried him, third day, with how much power? So we do know that. Amen. So having said that, praise God, the lady got off, her and her children, and it was in a blizzard. And I don't know whether that lady made it. I don't know what happened to her. That story didn't tell me that. Amen. Uh, go to verse 3. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Now go to 4. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. Now go back to three. Now another thing about preaching, you're going to see many times signs and wonders. Now sometimes we say, well, we don't see a lot of miracles today. You know one of the greatest miracles in the world? Could somebody tell me? When somebody gets saved. When somebody gets saved. Despite, praise God, what they were going through, persecution and evil, people speaking evil against them, guess what? Long, for a long time, therefore, they are both speaking boldly. In other words, people talking about them, putting them down, but guess what they kept doing? See, it, it's, it's sort of easy to preach when, when people pat you on your back. But when people go to talking about you, can you still stand up and preach the gospel? No, Taylor, you're going to be a great preacher. Everybody ain't going to pat you on the back all the time, but do you know you're preaching the word? Get that in the new living. But the apostles stayed there a long time, preaching boldly about the grace of the Lord. And the Lord proved their message was true by giving them power to do miraculous signs and wonders. And, and, and God proved their message was true. People began to get saved. Signs and wonders, people began to get healed. And they stayed there a long time. See, sometimes, that's why I'm telling you something. I don't understand. I say I don't understand. I ain't talking about nobody. <laughs> A preacher who say God called them, but when somebody look at them funny, they ready to run. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, hello. They stayed there a long time. God told Jeremiah, say, set your face like a piece of flint. Amen. Amen. This is what they did. They didn't withdraw or flee. They didn't sugarcoat the word. Guess what? They didn't sugarcoat it. 
They talking about Jesus. Some of these Jews still didn't like Jesus. You know, sometimes you want to get in with people. Somebody sugarcoated sometimes. They didn't sugarcoat it. They didn't compromise. They said, okay, let's make a compromise. You could be saved through Christ, and you could be saved through Judaism. They didn't play that. And, 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 and they, didn't, they didn't seek to please the officials, the, uh, the uh, priests and all that. When God called you to preach, you get up behind that desk, and uh, that be you a woman preacher, a man preacher, whoever. Even those of us who are called to be ambassadors, we shouldn't sugarcoat the word for nobody. Amen. Let's go to a, a something else in verse 3. Uh, watch this here. Verse 3 said, they preach boldly, praise God. Now, uh, they preach boldly about what? Now, when you're talking about what God could do, you don't have to back down for nobody. How many know he could save? How many know he could heal? How many know he could bless you? When you know, hallelujah, when you know God, you don't have to be like Mickey Mouse. Said, well, I th no, God could do everything he said he could do in this book. Do y'all believe that? Yes. Amen. Now, now watch this, watch this, watch this. Go to, uh, this may be a little lengthy, but go to Acts chapter 429. Read that, Sister Thomas. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Now, when you're preaching and working for God, I, and this, this goes for anything you do in the Lord, you got to stay before God in prayer and ask God to give you strength to do what he called you to do. Because let me tell you something. Here's the other part of the coin. People can wear you down. You hear me? You got to be delivered from people. If you don't get delivered from people, you will never finish what God has called you to do. And I don't care who you are, somebody going to talk about you if you're trying to do what God wants you to do. Somebody going to praise you, but you may not get pats on the back. That's why I praise God. You got to, Lord, give me boldness. Give me boldness. Because you, you, you got to say what God wants you to say. Amen. Paul said, if I set out to please man, I can't please God. Right. Well, I want a church full of people, so I ain't gonna, I'm not going to preach. I'm going to talk about a little sin. I'm going to talk about healing. I'm going to talk about blessing. You got to preach everything. Now, let me say something. They say Joel Osteen don't preach against that. I beg to differ. I think Joel just got a different way he preached it. Joe Osteen is a great preacher. You ain't got to be sending everybody to hell, but he'd be telling, he be telling people, I heard him preach a sermon, like, be real. But you can't please man. You got to cry loud, spare not. Well, I'm going to step on Brother Caldwell family, but I'm not going to mess with my children. You got to tell everybody just like it is. So when they got their boldness, through prayer. And that's where you get boldness. When you're doing the work of the Lord, you got to stay before the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, 7 and 8. Read that, Sister Thomas. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, 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 now. somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank God has not, when we get in the pulpit, we're not supposed to fight in the pulpit. But God has given us the power, love, and a sound mind. When you get before the people of God, you say what God wants you to say. Lord, I want my church full. Well, it may be full, it may not. But when you preach the word, God will stand with you. Go to, the, go to verse 8, says Thomas. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Anybody ashamed of what God has done for you? They got a song I say, he done so much for me. Has he ever healed anybody? Has God ever brought anybody out? You, you, ever, you, ever, you ever been up against a wall, you needed a way made for you? And you knew couldn't, oh, thank you, Jesus. Couldn't nobody make that way but the Lord. How many need a blessing right now? 
Now, how can you be ashamed of somebody who does so much for you? Read on, babe. Sister Thomas, going to touch Nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Now, now, these are part, now there's some afflictions in the gospel, Brother Larry. Yes, sir. There's some afflictions. Yes, sir. Everybody ain't going to smile in your face. Sometimes you're going to have to go through things. Sometimes you're going to have to preach and you're going through trials yourself. But be thou part, take off afflictions of the gospel. You can't sugarcoat it when you're going through. You got to tell it like it is. According to the power of God. Amen. Now, 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 let's go back to verse 3 again. Acts chapter 14, 3. And look what he did to put proof that God was with them. The last part of that verse, they read that, that granted what? And granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Man, people was getting saved. People was getting healed. Let me tell you something. Sometimes people be getting blessings in the church service behind the gospel, and we don't even see it. Y'all believe that? People be getting blessed sometimes. We don't even see it, man. Oh, hallelujah. There have been times when I was a young preacher. I, I remember this when I first started preaching, Brother Taylor. It was a lady in North Carolina. She let me preach in a, she had a little old gun bear, gun bear house. And she knew Marie Mama, Marie Mother was real popular in town. And she knew I was her son-in-law. Me and Marie had been married about what? Two weeks to a month, maybe a month, maybe a little longer. And I had did something to upset the first lady. I don't know what I did. It couldn't have been that bad. And I got my first preacher. I was a bootleg preacher. I didn't have a license at first. This lady say, uh, you, you sister say this, son. Yes, ma'am. Well, I want you to come preach. When, when no more than about maybe five people there. And I begged Sister Thomas to go. She said, I ain't going because you showed out. And I sweet talked and sweet talked and sweet talked. She said, I'm going, but don't expect me to be in it. I say, well, now, Larry, I wasn't, a, I wasn't all that of a preacher. I, I, had, I didn't even have a license. And, I, you know, I, I could write. I said, boy, to get up. Boy, the, whole, the power going to be on me. I got up and Sister Thomas just. <laughs> and that house was so hot, I was sweating. You know what I learned from that? If you're a preacher, don't ever upset your wife before you preach. <laughs> Amen. Because call, call Sister Thomas wasn't playing. Amen. She wasn't, and, and rightfully so. And, and, and I, I probably wasn't saying things just right then. Amen. Now, now, now watch this here. Watch this here. Signs and wonders was done. God was moving, praise God. People was getting saved. People was getting healed. God was doing some great things. Amen. And that, that's the proof of a person ministry. Now, don't, just because you don't see what we call a miracle, I'm telling you something, the greatest miracle in the world is when somebody gets saved. I, anybody remember the night you got saved or the day you got saved? Uh, brother Wilbur, wave your hand. If you look back, see, wave it again. See Brother Wilbur back. Tuesday, 1969. I went to a little house church in Valdosta, Georgia, and I was sitting right back where Wilbur. And, and, and I went... I went for one purpose only. The pastor had prayed for me. Uh, I had flunked world history in high school. I was going to summer school. I wanted to join the Marine Corps, but I didn't want to go in service without a high school education. And, and, and the reason I flunked world history, I thought I didn't need it because in our school, you took a uh, half semester of uh, social, social, uh, sociology, a half semester of government, and I had taken world history. So I said, that's three, three social sciences. Well, our school said, no, the half semester of government and sociology is one, and then American, uh, American history is two, and world history, which I flunked, would have been three. So I had to go to summer school, and I was so depressed I mean, I don't know why. And I had a few other problems going on. And this preacher just moved next door to us from New York named Reverend Wright. Reverend Wright, if you're watching, I love you, brother. That's my dad and Lord. And I was a good old Baptist boy. And 
And man, we didn't go to church on all Tuesday night. But because I had this problem, I went to Reverend Wright. I said, Reverend Wright, would you pray for me? And I kiss you not. That man prayed and that thing lifted off of me. The next Tuesday, I was out in the, I was out in the back lifting weights in my yard, getting ready to go into the Marine Corps. And he came to his fence. His house was right at Jason's house. He said, Roger, we have in church tonight. Would you like to come? Well, man, I'm a Baptist. We don't go to church on Tuesday. <laughs> my, my mama has to bribe us to go on Sunday. But because that man prayed for me, I said, Reverend Wright, I'll be there. And I went and sat way back where Brother Wibble was at. And I was going to, I'm telling you all the truth. It was this girl named Annie Ruth Garland. Anna Ruth, man, she was almost pretty as Sister Thomas. She wasn't quite as pretty, but she was almost. And I said, I want to see Anna Ruth shout, because Anna Ruth was smart and pretty. Well, that night, when the preacher got through preaching, something got a hold of me. And they saw me rolling on the floor and shouting. And that was way back in 1960, and I was, I've never been the same since. You heard that song, said something got a hold of me? Well, I went to church that night, and something got a hold of me, and I got saved. I was the first one who got saved in my pastor's ministry. And it was from the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's the best thing. You ever heard James please say, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. Can, can I get a witness? Amen. Never will forget that day. That was a sign and wonder, man. I got saved, and people began to uh, talk. And I went to summer school. I was in summer school, went to summer school. My world history summer school teacher was named Miss Bethay. And I say, Miss Bethay, I want to tell, tell how the Lord saved me. And it was about 40 kids in the class. And I got up, went to talk. I said, that's enough, Thomas. I said, Miss B, the Lord saved me. I, I got this. And man, I, I know I can see it. They didn't want to hear all that. And then the little girls in town, I just, I just, I mean, I just quit. I wasn't a bad guy, but I, ain't, I wasn't courting to nothing. I was sold out to God. Then someone went to say, he must be gay and all that. But I was sold out to God. But that was a sign and wonder for me to get saved. Went home, man, and told my mama I was saved. She said, yeah, boy, you always been saved. You were saved when you were born. We were Baptists. <laughs> and, and then I, I went to a Pentecostal church, and, and they would put oil on you. And because I, I had such a radical change, I mean, I quit doing a lot. I wasn't bad. I, I was a good guy. But I quit doing, quit going. I could go to any club in town at 17. But my mama didn't want me to go to church. And she said, them people don't put that oil on you. They don't put witch. And people, people down south believe in witchcraft. She said, they don't they put witchcraft on you. And, and my mama, who's in heaven today, because the same church she whipped me from going to, she got saved in that church before she died. She said, I'm going to tell this preacher something. I mess my boy up. My boy used to have fun. Now he's going around acting like he's crazy. And uh, uh, praise God. I remember one night I went to slip to church. I go to any club in town, slip to church, 17, out of, well, just about out of high school. Man, Maria got a stench of cord and whipped me from going to church. Now, I, I look back, she just didn't know no better. But I'm telling you something, Jesus changed my life. And through my life, hallelujah, give God the glory, my entire family came to know the Lord. And I'm the only one living in my family. Amen. Now, 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 what I'm saying is the preaching of the gospel is necessary because souls, that's one of the primary ways souls are saved. Amen? They has all kinds of signs in one. Let's go to verse 5. Acts 14, 5. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully, and to stone them. Six. Go on. They were aware of it and fled unto Lystra uh -huh. and Derby, mm -hmm. cities of Lyconia. Okay. And unto the region that lied round about. Now, now watch this. Verse 5. Look here. 
sometime, and there have been preachers, and not only in foreign countries, but even in America, there have been preachers who have lost their lives for preaching the God. How many believe that? Amen. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews. Now, you see how the devil turned these people against Paul then? Y'all see that? It's a bad thing to be used of the devil, but it's happened all the time. And also the Jews, with the rulers, to use them despitefully. Get that a new living, Sister, Sister Tillman. Then a mob of Gentiles and Jews, along with their leaders, decided to attack and stone them. Is that something? Now, this rhetorical. Why would somebody want to attack men of God? Well, it's not rhetorical. What, what y'all think? Just the devil working through them. We, and I appreciate how y'all hold Sister Thomas and I up. Man, y'all just don't know. And how y'all hold other preachers up. And how we hold each other up. But the Bible says, go to, go to Romans uh, 1017. Romans 1017. Well, so then well, well, I, go, go, go to 16. How beautiful the feet of those who. What, what scripture is that? Somebody help me out. Go to, go to 18, says Thomas. 18. Where's that scripture? How beautiful are the feet of those? 10, 15. 10, 15. Go to 15. Thank you. Read, babe. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Now, a, a preacher got to be sent, and Brother Taylor, Lord's willing, be preaching his first sermon Sunday night, Lord's willing. We ain't got nothing going on Sunday night, do we? Brother Taylor, I'm putting you on the spot. How, how can you preach? You got to be, and Brother Taylor, we know God called him, man. He's been, I tell you what, you don't have to tell a preacher uh, he's called. He'll tell you. Ain't that right, Larry? Okay, read, Sister Thomas. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now, 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 now. Somebody bringing glad tidings, Jesus saved, of good things. He loved you. He fights your battles. He opened doors for you. Man. In biblical days, when they saw a prophet or preacher came out, they got scared with the prophet. But when they came, they got glad because they knew they was coming with something. How beautiful are the feet of those, uh, of them that preach the gospel. What is the gospel? Man, you could say good news, death, burial, and resurrection, the entire Bible. But it's, it's good. Why would you want to fight somebody bringing you something good? Just the devil. But you need that preacher. And I'm not saying this because I'm one. God worked through the preacher. Okay, let's go, go to verse. Uh, hit six again. Hit six and seven. Go to six and seven. Acts six and seven. Acts 14. Okay, read it again. They were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and Derby, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lied round about. Now, they, 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 they saw what they were trying to do, heard them, and guess what? <clears throat> they weren't running because they were scared, but sometimes you got to know when to step back. So they went to cities round about the region. Read on. And there they preached the gospel. And when they got to the city they were in, they kept preaching the gospel. Amen. When God call you, you just can't stop it. Amen. 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 Read. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Now, when they got to Lystra, uh, uh, 
When they got to Lystra, there was a crippled man from his mother's womb who had never walked. Read on, Sister Thomas. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Now, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfast beholding him and perceived that he had faith to be healed. Read, go to 10. Said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Go to 11. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Now, listen, we ain't going to get too deep in this. People get caught up in superstition. Now, here this man was born from birth with a deformity. And sometimes we look at illnesses and sickness, we say, man, it just got to be like that. But we just got to keep the faith. And i tell you what, sometimes it get tough, but God will tip up on you and say, surprise, you're healed. Now, now, this man born with this deformity, and you say, what we'll say is, well, he's born like that. That's never going to change. I got a question for you. Is there anything too hard for God? What's this? Saying in a speech, praise God. Go, 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 go back, go back to, go back to eight. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent. He couldn't do nothing. In his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Can you imagine? I saw a lady today. She was in a, one of them little schoolers going somewhere. I say, Lord God, I say, at least we can walk and do things. Some people, praise God, they can't hardly do anything. Somebody say, but God. God is able. God is able. Read, go over to 9, Sister Thomas. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Now, now, this is so important. Now, now we go to Romans 17, Rom Romans 10, 17. Get that again, because that's so important. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The Bible says all things are possible. To him that believe. How many believe that? Amen. Go to Psalms 1033. 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I love this is one of my favorite scriptures. Okay. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth all thy diseases. Y'all believe you can heal all diseases? Amen. You got to just keep the faith. Don't let none shake your faith in God. And God worked through doctors. Let me tell you this but he can work without the doctor. These things are any way you bless me, Lord. I'll be satisfied. This man heard the word and Paul them preaching about Jesus could do and guess what? Faith jumped in it. Now faith is the opposite of fear and doubt. And, and, and man, when faith, the word, the word of God could bring faith. And, and, and I know some people have been struggling. Praise God, you got the symptoms. Don't let the symptom tell you you're not healed. That's right. Amen. Keep saying, I'm healed. Yes. I'm healed in Jesus' name. I'm, I never will forget that night. I never forget that night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I couldn't walk. I had side and nerve problems so bad. Went to bed. I mean, I, I had to go and get up in the fetal position. Sister Thomas was my heating pad friend. That we have, we we have. I don't know why. Did they have electric heating pads back then? She microwave it, baby. Go put my heating pad. She go put it in the microwave, boy. She put that thing on that side. Of, oh, boy, that thing. I was. I couldn't come to church for three months. And one night, about three o'clock in the morning, Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost came to me and said, "Get up." 
I kid you not. Let me see how I did that. Say, get up and go put your heating pad in the microwave. And I got up. When I went to bed, I couldn't walk. I got up just like this. And we were living in a one-story house then. And I walked all the way into the kitchen, got in front of the microwave, opened the door, getting ready to put it in. And the spirit said, look at you, you're healed. Now, I've had a lot of back aches, but I never suffered from sciatic nerve. God healed my body. Somebody say, thank the Lord. God is a healer, saints. God is a healer. But you don't, praise God, you can't give in to the symptoms, and you got to watch what come out of your mouth. I believe when Paul was preaching, faith swelled, swelled up, swelled, faith welled up in that man. One of my favorite verses, and I have to tell myself this, is Proverbs 18.21. Get that, Sister Tim. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I don't care what you're going through. Watch what you say. And if something come out of your mouth, not let God curse it in Jesus' name. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Because you could speak death to your situation. And the Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit. So if you love talking negative, guess what fruit you're going to do? If you love talking what God could do, talking faith, and you're looking at them symptoms, the devil says, you're never going to get healed. You're never going to. you got to call that devil a liar. And keep walking by faith. Well, it kills sudden, so the devil is a liar. It ain't going to kill me. I'm going to die with something, but that ain't going to kill me. Because let me tell you something. When the word is preached, the word build faith. And sometimes you got to tune everything out. Just keep your eye on Jesus. Come on, say praise the Lord. Come on, say praise the Lord. Someone say, I believe everything God could do. Praise God. Now watch this here. Verse 9 say, and this was so powerful. Go to 9, uh, 14, 9. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Now, he, he did what? The same did what? Heard Paul speak. And did what? Who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Paul up there preaching. He said, man, if Jesus could do this and this and this, faith jumped in that man's spirit. Somebody say the necessity of preaching. That man said, I could be healed. Now, you know the devil meant you ain't going to be healed. You were born like this. God made you like, God could, God could grow new body parts. Amen. God could turn any situation of mine. But faith from the word of God jumped in that man's spirit. And that man got delivered from something he was born with. Tell me God can't do it. Somebody lift your hands and say, God, you're great. God, you're great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to go to verse 10. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to keep you all too long tonight. Hallelujah. Go to 10. Said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. That man got up there. Woo! <laughs> and, and, and he would walk. He came in like, well, he couldn't walk. But that man jumped up and went to walking. I got a limp in my walk. I believe, now, that one of them was walking in, in, in the first part of Acts. But this man went to wa walking when he heard the word of God. Somebody say, thank God for preaching. Thank God for preaching. Thank God for preaching. God is saying, Brother Deacon, y'all come on and lift the offering. Praise God. Okay, let me see. Go to verse 11, says Thomas. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices 
saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Now, people knew this guy was born like that. But when they saw, and, and preachers, we know this, we got to be careful remotely taking God's glory. God, God, don't, God don't like to share. He don't like to share his glory. He wants us to give all the glory to him. Because he's just working through us. Now, these people saw what Paul had done. Guess what they started doing? Trying to make gods out of Paul and Barnabas. Read on, Sister Thomas. And they called Barnabas Jupiter. And Paul, Mercurius. Uh-huh. Because he was the chief speaker. Called Paul Mercurius. Because he was the chief speaker. I see Paul doing all the talking. Read on. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. Now, I'm not trying to put any preacher down, but I've seen, I, I wouldn't dare call no names, I've seen some preachers who have tried to take God's glory. Man, that's a bad thing. You ever see, have you seen anything like that, Dr. Cartwell? Yes, sir. Be the sure did. Amen. People come to you, oh, you did good, say pray for me. Mm -hmm. And keep me before the Lord. Yes. Now, Paul them could have eaten that up. Uh -huh. Read on, Sister Thomas. Which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of, they rent their clothes. They rent their clothes. They said, man, don't, don't give these accolades to us. Who are we? The choir sung good. God blessed us the same. And y'all sung something. Ooh, girl, but y'all sung. Did not choir sing something? Preach a good service. Thank you. Pray for I like what brother, Larry, what you say? When somebody say you preach good? To God be the glory, brother. rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out. Read. And saying, sirs, why do you have these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn go, from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth. Now look, look how Paul says, says, sir, why do you do these things? We are, we are men just like you, like passions. And we suffer stuff too. I mean, and, and preach unto you that, we, that, that ye should turn from these vanities from false gods unto the living God, which made heaven and the earth and the sea and all things. Paul them let them know we, 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 we just servants. Read on. Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own way. Listen. Come on. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness. God has always had a witness. God always had somebody he could work through. But when he worked through you, God don't want nobody taking his glory. We can't, as Brother Ella had to say, we can't handle his glory. Can't handle it. Read. In that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons. He the one gave us the fruitful seasons and rain from heaven to grow the food. Read on. Filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they, the people, that they had not done sacrifice unto them. Scarce. They scarcely restrained them because they were ready to make they were ready to make gods out of Paul and Barnabas. They scarcely scaled them back. Amen. It makes you feel good when people say you preached a good sermon or God used you. But you be sure to let them know that God did it and without him we could do nothing. Read on. 
And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Now, I'm going to stop here because this, this is a different segment. But see, even though some people may be trying to put you up, the devil's still trying to take you down. Amen. And you got to keep your, as preachers, you got to keep your eye on the Lord. I love Mother Way Bible study. I love the way God used y'all. But let me tell you something, without God, we can't do nothing. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I have to ask God to forgive me. I used to go through a little opposition in this church, this Sunday, and I get up, oh, God blessed me to build a church, and I didn't do nothing. I didn't do jack. Y'all excuse my language. God did that. Lord, forgive me for my pride. God don't like us taking his glory. Amen. God want us to give all the glory and all the honor to him. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm going to wrap it up right here. Amen. I think we've been studying for how long? About an hour now? How long? That's about, that about enough. I'm getting, I'm learning something. Come on up here first, Lady Tom. Saints, thank God for the preacher. Thank God. And I thank God for the people. And, and I tell you what, when God does something, keep the faith. Keep walking in faith. Mm -hmm. Praise God. It may look tough sometimes, yeah. but keep looking to the hills from yes. whence comes your help. Yes. Yes, How many know all our help come from the Lord? From the Lord. Yes. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Without, God, without God, I can, I can do, do nothing. Girl, you make me want to kiss you. <laughs> I'm getting in trouble up here. Well, say that's our Bible study tonight and the necessity of preaching. So glad to see y'all out. Amen. We want to pray tonight before we go any further. Praise God. I don't care what you're going through. Yes. God is able. Praise able. God. Able. If you want to stand or sit, let's touch and agree. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for calling those of us to preach and do uh, five-fold ministry. Yes. And Father, we ask you to anoint us and use us for your glory. Your glory. And we confess without you, we could do nothing. Yes. We ask you to bless preachers and ministers all over the world. Yes. That's doing your work. And Father, when opposition come, yes. give them that same spirit of boldness yes. that Paul and Barnabas had yes. to stand in spite of opposition. Yes. Now, Lord, we ask you to stretch out your hands tonight. Yes, Lord. Bless your people everywhere, yes. name by name yes. and one by one. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. lay hands on yourself and you and uh, Facebook and YouTube. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, Lord, I ask you to touch me. I in my, body, in my body, from the crown of my head the of my to the soles of my feet, I believe by faith, believe by faith that, you that you took stripes for my healing. For my healing. And in Jesus' name, in Jesus name I, receive it. I receive it. I already have it. Already have I'm just going to thank you for it. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, bless our leaders, yes, Lord. political leaders, spiritual leaders, yes, Lord. and bless our people everywhere. Yes, we love you today, Lord, and we praise you, and we give you all the glory and honor. Lord. Be with Mother Gibson, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give her strength and, and, yes, and the, the entire Gibson family. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for blessing us with Deacon Gibson. Thank you, Lord. Bless every member of this church. Yes, Lord. Everybody say, Lord, Lord. Bless, our pastor. bless our pastor. Say, touch Pastor Thomas. Touch and, Lord, we thank you, yes, thank for, you. Victory for victory in everything, in everything concerning, you concerning you in our lives. In, our lives. in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Well, as Joe Dolstein say, well, that's the word. Do you receive it? Amen. God bless you. Amen. amen. Do we have anything special going on this week? Well, We, we, Brother Taylor, you think you want to go Sunday? Lord's willing. Brother Taylor hoping to hear him preach his first message. Praise God. Sunday Praise night God. at about, what, 7? Okay. You'll be teaching Bible band anyway, uh, YP. <laughs> and I want y'all to come out. We're going to hear Brother Taylor. Anything else going on? That's at 6. But, but, but we, we'll let that go and just, that's going to be our service. 
Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. Amen. Thank you. Again, Sister Cynthia, we're so glad to have you out. Amen. 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 God. And, and uh, Deacon Gibson Funeral, home homegoing service will be next Thursday. Amen. Start at 11. 11. You have something to say, Sister Hill? No. Amen. I see you with your announcement. All hearts and minds are clear. Stand on your feet. Praise God. Praise God. Huh? Thursday at 11. Thursday. Is that, am I right, Sonia? Yeah. Yeah. That's home going. Home the okay. viewing is at 10. The viewing? Okay. All right. Praise God. Brother, brother God closes out with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for the pastor's wife. And Lord God, our minds and hearts are still on Sister Gibson. Yes. He was. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we, as we leave this place, Lord, help us not to be so foolish and leave from your presence. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Let's go back and read some. Well, thank you. I I, I know I had gone an hour.